Hello everyone, and welcome to DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be continuing our trek through the demon monster types with the Glabrezu. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. The Glabrezu takes up page 58 of the Monster Manual, and its lore can be found alongside all of the other demons' lore on page 53. A Glabrezu takes great pleasure in destroying mortals through temptation, and these creatures are among the few demons to offer their service to creatures foolish enough to summon them. Although Glabrezus are devastating in combat, they prefer to tempt victims into ruin, using power or wealth as a lure. Engaging in guile, trickery, and evil bargains, a Glabrezu hoards riches that it uses to fulfill promises to short-sighted summoners and weak-willed mortals. However, if its attempts to entice or deceive fail, a Glabrezu has the strength to fight and win. And that's all there is when it comes to the lore of the Glabrezu. Short and sweet, as per usual with these lesser demons, it seems. However, a very interesting set of traits and characteristics with the Glabrezu, it's very much more so intelligent. I don't know if intelligent is the correct word, but... It's definitely one of the more sly types of demons than the previous ones that we've discussed and gone through. Very interesting. Almost closer to that of a devil, really, than that of a demon. Although I'm sure it's still going to be more chaotic and stuff like that. It appears to enjoy bargains and deals and stuff of that nature, which seems to be stuff like your Faustian bargains and contracts sealed with a signature of blood and stuff like that. But before we get into all of that, let us continue on with the Glabrezu stat block, shall we? All right, so the Glabrezu is a large fiend, demon, with a chaotic evil alignment. It has an armor class of 17, which is natural armor. It has hit points that average 157, or 15d10 plus 75, and it has a movement speed of 40 feet. The Glabrezu has a strength of 20, a dexterity of 15, a constitution of 21, an intelligence of 19, a wisdom of 17, and a charisma of 16. Its saving throws include strength plus 9, constitution plus 9, wisdom plus 7, and charisma plus 7. The Glabrezu is resistant to the damage types of cold, fire, lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons. And the Glabrezu is immune to the poison damage type, as well as immune to the poisoned condition. The Glabrezu has senses of true sight for 120 feet and a passive perception of 13. The languages it can speak are abyssal and telepathy for 120 feet. The Glabrezu is a challenge rating of 9. On to the abilities. Innate Spellcasting The Glabrezu's spellcasting ability is Intelligence with a spell save DC of 16. The Glabrezu can innately cast the following spells requiring no material components. At Will, Darkness, Detect Magic, and Dispel Magic. And once per day each Confusion, Fly, and Power Words Stun. Magic Resistance. The Glabrezu has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. On to the actions. Multi-attack. The Glabrezu makes four attacks, two with its pincers and two with its fists. Alternatively, it makes two attacks with its pincers and casts one spell. Pincer. Melee weapon attack with a plus 9 to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 16 or 2d10 plus 5 bludgeoning damage. If the target is a medium or smaller creature, it is grappled with an escape DC of 15. The Glabrezu has two pincers, each of which can grapple only one target. Fist. Melee weapon attack with a plus 9 to hit, a reach of 5 feet on one target. 
On a hit, it does an average of 7 or 2d4 plus 2 bludgeoning damage. And that's all there is when it comes to the Glabrezu in terms of its stats and abilities and such. A pretty interesting creature. It definitely has some intriguing abilities and its characteristics and traits from the lore are very unique so far in comparison to the other demons that we've discussed. Especially because a lot of the previous ones are very much so inclined to so chaos and havoc sort of in a well for lack of a better term blatant and kind of obvious manner right like the Kazmes, the dretches you know the balor the barogura they're all terrible and evil and driven by sowing chaos but a lot of it is sort of clear cut and evident right like the balor is super strong, therefore takes more of like a general position, you know, in terms of ranking and is just full of chaotic rage and stuff like that. The Balgora is more just the savage and brutal demonic King Kong, as it were, you know, the, the Kazme is sort of this strange spindly legged creature and stuff that confuses people and creates chaos in that way. And they like to dole out torture and stuff like that, but there's not really a reason for it. They just like to hurt and stuff like that. And the dretch is kind of the, the peon, the weakling of the demons. And it just sort of behaves like a rat would or a horde of rats. And, you know, they're just repulsive and they cause nothing but pain and destruction all for the sake of just sowing chaos. Whereas the Glabrezu appears to be sort of more cunning and intelligent, at least in terms of its lore and what it states its traits are, because it enjoys tricking people, making evil bargains, and it even has this sort of level of preparedness to hoard riches or treasures and what have you in order to trick these short-sighted individuals and give them an opportunity to make a deal and serve the Glabrezu. But what I find very interesting is that it claims that the Glabrezu hoards riches to fulfill the promises. So that means that the Glabrezu actually maintains its word with the individuals that are willing to make the deal. See, for me, if I were to implement a Glabrezu, as it were, into an adventure or an encounter, I could long con the players and I could give them a character or an NPC of sorts that would be willing to offer them opportunities or riches and stuff like that as this sort of deal or bargain and even have the hoard of riches to present to them and stuff like that. But I don't know necessarily that I would have the Glabrezu fulfill its promise, right? I mean, there's really no reason why it would outside of the fact that it has no use for loot and gold and treasures of that sort. But you would think that the Glabrezu would just be like, here's the hoard of treasure if you're willing to make the deal. And then they make the deal. And then the adventurers or whomever manages to complete their end of the bargain returns to the Glabrezu and says, hey, we've done what you told us to do. The task is complete. We were successful. Here's proof, what have you. Give us the shinies. And then the Glabrezu would just say, mm, no, not gonna, right? I feel like that would be more of a chaotic behavior, right? And the Glabrezu basically got what it wanted and implemented its enjoyment of trickery and deceit in order to gain its own success, right? And then you could definitely implement a combat scenario there, sort of a climactic final battle, if you would, where your players go up against the Glabrezu in order to defeat it and take the treasure and destroy the evil creature that had tricked them and manipulated them to do its bidding. And it could make for a nice sort of series of adventures, right? And they managed to overcome this evil monster. Now, what I find interesting is that the Glabrezu has innate spell casting. However, none of the spells that it has is any sort of illusion spell. Most of the Glabrezu's magical ability seems to be combative, right? Or for combat, 
except maybe fly, although obviously fly is useful in combat as well. So it seems as though the Glabrezu is presented as is without any form of illusory magic in order to change its shape or figure, anything like that. But it does seem to be a pretty tough monster. So if I was to implement a Glabrezu, I would add a spell to its arsenal in some form of illusion, right? Like major illusion or minor illusion. Perhaps not minor illusion, but some sort of illusion magic that allows it to change its shape or shape shift or at least provide the players with this sort of individual that might be less starkly grotesque and demonic and monstrous to them in order to string them along. However, you could also do that through the way of an NPC of some sort, right? Some sort of summoner or alchemist or merchant or wizard, something like that. And the wizard is the messenger between the Glibrezu and the players, where the deal is made between the Glibrezu and the non-player character, and then the non-player character is the quest giver to the players, and the players are completing these missions for the benefit of the summoner. And then once the summoner has completed their end of the bargain or of the deal with the Glibrezu, then they could be rewarded by the Glibrezu and perhaps split it with the party, or perhaps the summoner realizes or comes to the conclusion that it has no use for the adventurers anymore, so it just tries to do away with them. Perhaps you could create some sort of scenario where this this sinister NPC quest giver has been figured out by the adventurers, and then the adventurers at the end, maybe the final quest or final mission, try to stop the summoner or this evil individual and because the deal is complete and the quest giver had held up their end of the bargain with the glabrezu perhaps now they want to change the terms of the deal they want the glabrezu to reveal itself and deal with the adventurers right get rid of them one way or the other and something like that now another way that you could go in terms of using the npc summoner quest giver method is Perhaps this individual is not necessarily sinister or evil themselves. Perhaps they sort of got in over their head and thought they were summoning one kind of creature, perhaps something from the Feywild, perhaps something from the Shadowfell, something like that. And instead they got their summoning spell mixed up, messed up some runes, some symbols, who knows, and instead they ended up summoning this demon accidentally, and they had been tricked by the demon presenting itself as something else, and now they're sort of locked into this deal with the Glabrezu, who effectively tricked them, right, and gave them a bum deal. And maybe now the summoner is trying to remedy the situation by using the adventurers to go on these missions or quests to seek out means of stopping the Glabrezu from having the power and control over this individual, right? And you could lead into that in a very interesting way, right? So for example, the players could enter a town or city or something like that, maybe even a village. And there's a rumor of some, you know, evil warlock or wizard or witch or something like that, who lives in the forest, like a hermit, something like that. Perhaps this individual lived in the town or village or what have you, and after some time, there was all sorts of chaos and destruction and vandalism that they started doing, right? Even if they were an individual of good standing and high regard, all of a sudden, from one day to the next, like the flip of a switch, they started causing destruction and chaos and stuff like that in the town until it got to some point of no return, and effectively, the townsfolk exiled this individual, right? Maybe the summoner who got tricked with the evil bargain of the Glabrezu took it too far, right? There was a night where it was a straw that broke the camel's back and, and the summoner set fire to the bank or to the most well-regarded merchant's shop or something like that. And since then, they've sort of exiled this individual and they were never allowed to return into the town. And now as time has passed and your adventurers have shown up, the summoner who once was of 
high regard or high repute is now of ill repute, but since some years have gone by that nobody has seen them around anymore, but the damage and destruction is occurring once again, and they're suspicious of the individual returning in some way or another because the patterns or the modus operandi is the same or similar to what was done many years ago. And so they implore the adventurers to go and seek out this individual in order to bring them to justice or what have you, or perhaps see if they are in fact still alive and still behaving in this capricious manner. And the players go and seek them out, find the individual, and it turns out the individual is still alive and is in fact causing this chaos and this destruction and damage again, perhaps through the cover of night or through proxies, perhaps they hire cell swords or bandits or what have you, maybe even poor street kids to go and, you know, just sort of cause any sort of chaos and destruction that they can in order to keep the Glabrezu at bay. And perhaps over the years, the tragic summoner has managed to figure out that they can exercise some form of control or get some sort of footing over the Glabrezu by figuring out what its true name is, right? Because as it's stated through some extra descriptive text in the demons section of the monster manual, a mortal who can learn a demon's true name can use the summoning magic to call the demon from the abyss and then exercise some measure of control over it. However, you know, most of the demons that are brought to the material plane are going to do everything they can to just sow discord and cause damage and stuff like that. However, that could in fact be the climactic encounter or combat scenario of your adventure in that your players have gone off and sought out a means of figuring out this demon's true name and stuff of that nature. And once they figure out the true name of the Glabrezu, they can bring it back to the summoner and the summoner can cast the spell to bring the Glabrezu to the material plane and the players can fight the Glabrezu and try to overcome and defeat it, right? Now, an interesting fact about demons is that when they are killed on the material plane, they're not killed for good. It's something almost like an aspect of them makes its way to the material plane. So though you can stop a demon in the material plane, once you kill them, their essence, if you would, returns to the abyss. And after some time, they sort of re-manifest themselves and they're back again. And that could lead to some interesting potential outcomes or necessities, let's say, for the adventurers, for the summoner. Perhaps the summoner doesn't want them to kill the Glabrezu. Perhaps the summoner wants them to trap it so that it is stuck there in the material plane, but it cannot do anything. Perhaps the summoner wants the party to find a way into the abyss so that they can take on the Glabrezu there, which would be intriguing due to the fact that it's sort of a home turf advantage for the Glabrezu and it could enlist the help of a number of other demons, any of the previously mentioned demons, anything like that. You could even do something to the effect of the Glabrezu making a deal with another demon to help it out, sort of out of desperation, right? Perhaps the Glabrezu requests the help of a Baylor or a Balgora and makes a deal with it sort of on the spot to help it out, right? I mean, you could even generate an entire adventure just with that, actually, where you have a Glabrezu that has made a deal with some other form of demon, lesser or otherwise, and maybe the Glabrezu itself has decided to contact a member of the party or the party as a whole and see if it can convince them to take on the other demon that it's made the deal with, right? Perhaps it's just trying to sow its chaos in that form. Perhaps it's trying to get a leg up on some higher ranking demon in order to gain more authority and power in their hierarchy structure, right? I think that that could lead to some pretty interesting situations, especially if you use one of the other demons in your campaign, perhaps at a location that's causing chaos and trouble and destruction and stuff like that. And the players are not quite sure about what to do with it or how to overcome it or deal with that. So what do they do? They try to gather as much information and resources as they can. Perhaps all roads are leading to a brick wall that they can't seem to get over. And maybe one night at camp as someone's taking watch or what have you, 
something manifests itself from the fire or from the shadows in the woods or wherever they are. And it's the Glabrezu saying, hey, listen, I made a deal with this thing and it reneged on its side of the bargain. So now I'm here to make a deal with you because we both want to exact some form of justice one way or the other towards that monster. And I can give you all the information you need to know in order to take on and overcome or defeat the demon. And that could lead to some interesting adventures and outcomes and results and choices made by your players. Perhaps the deal that Glabrezu offers is to hand over a bunch of information and stuff like that to the players about this other higher ranked demon to them so that they have an opportunity to stop the demon from causing havoc wherever it is. But in return, the Glabrezu wants the true name of the demon, right? Of the Baylor, let's say. The Glabrezu wants to know its true name. And if the players can figure out the true name of the Baylor, the Glabrezu could provide them with treasure as a reward. The Glabrezu could provide them with more information, perhaps about a higher demon or a demon lord. The Glabrezu could provide them with some form of resource or information that may lead them to whatever higher villain you're setting up for them for the campaign. You know, perhaps it can offer them information on another plot thread, or it could give the players another hook for a different adventure that they could continue on, right? And then you could have the Glabrezu follow through with that and give them that information or treasure or what have you. Or you could have the Glabrezu change its mind or, you know, never have planned to do that in the first place. Just said it would so that it could get these idiot mortals to do whatever it wanted. And now that they have given the Glabrezu what it wants, i.e. the true name of the Bail or whatever it is, now the Glabrezu can control the Baylor and command it to do its bidding. So perhaps you have a combat situation where the players have to go up against both the Baylor and the Glabrezu, which would probably be a pretty tough fight as the Baylor, I believe, is a CR 15 and the Glabrezu is a CR of 9. But you could definitely do that. Perhaps the players have to flee. Perhaps the players are at a high enough level where that encounter would actually not be too deadly for them or anything like that. Or you could have something take place perhaps where the outcome is that the Glabrezu defeats the Baylor or whatever other demon you choose to use now takes its rank or its station in the pecking order, if you would, and now has more control over other lesser demons and sort of makes things worse for the material plane and for the players by causing more damage, more chaos, more havoc, stuff like that. You can even have the combat encounter after the players do the bidding of the Glabrezu basically be just the Glabrezu itself. I'm sure your players will want to fight it, especially since they just got hoodwinked or tricked by this demon monster thing. They'll want to take it out. You could have them fight the Glabrezu. The Glabrezu dies in the material plane, is gone for some time, and then returns again in the future as sort of a recurring villain or nuisance for your party to contend with, right? But all in all, I think that the Glabrezu is a pretty interesting monster, a pretty interesting demon, to be specific. You know, very different from the other demons. It certainly distinguishes itself as some other type of demon, at least so far. But with that being said, I think that it opens up a lot of doors for different kinds of adventures and ideas and sort of just food for thought, you know, where it can use like subterfuge and trickery and deceit to manipulate and generate bargains and deals with unsuspecting people. And I think that you can go a pretty long way with that actually and create not only an adventure, but perhaps multiple adventures. You know, perhaps this Glabrezu gets around, let's say, and has a bunch of deals with a bunch of people on the material plane and the players manage to stop one of these individuals that has made a deal with the Glabrezu, but there's a ton more and you could create a whole campaign of that, right? Or at least a nice chunk of a campaign of just this Glabrezu appearing, let's say on the material plane after the, after the adventurers take on some group of cultists that chose to worship this Glabrezu because they made a pact with it and it presents itself, mocks the players for some time. And what does it care if the players kill it or whatever it is? It'll be back in whatever, you know, 
a, a week or two in the abyss and it can present itself later on to continuously poke and prod at the players right and then the final battle with that would probably be super satisfying for them once they finally manage to permanently defeat and destroy this demonic monster that's been messing with them for some ungodly amount of time right but either way that's all i got for you fine folks today when it comes to the glabrezu i'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in i greatly appreciate it please feel free to leave a rating or review for the podcast i quickly went through some of the different podcast platforms i saw that on apple podcasts i had one five star review so whoever that was thank you very much i very much appreciate it and you good sir or madam are the true five star individual so but uh <laughs> with that being said please feel free to uh leave a review rate the podcast on whichever platform you're on if you can as it would help the podcast out it would help me out i'd greatly appreciate it as always if you're listening to this podcast on youtube I would ask that you subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share, hit that notification bell thingy as it would help me out greatly, help the channel out greatly, help the podcast out greatly, and get this podcast to the ears of more individuals who may need some food for thought or may be having some trouble in generating some ideas for the next leg of their campaign, the next adventure, or some side quests, what have you or even for some newer DMs that are not quite sure how to wrap their minds around creating an entire scenario using a single individual monster. But with that being said, I'd like to thank you all once again very, very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it, and I will see you on the next episode. Oh, actually, wait a second. Before I let you guys go, the next episode of Monsters Manifested we're going to be covering the Goristro. So hopefully that'll be an interesting episode. Kind of an interesting creature, sort of like a fiendish minotaur. But until then, thank you all very, very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.